In this second set of slides, we'll look a little closer at the model specification of the spatial probit and tobit models. In other words, how we bring spatial effects into these specifications. And the first part, I'll talk about the concept of a spatial, spatial latent variable, which is an extension of the uh, discussion of the classic probit, but extended to spatial models. And then we'll do something similar to what we have done for the linear regression model, namely assess the effect of spatial autocorrelation to on the underlying latent variable and its a probability of crossing the threshold. And then we'll look specifically at the spatial lag, probit and tobit, and the spatial error, tobit and probit. Spatially lagged, um, spatially latent variables are um, really nothing but a generalization of the traditional spatial specifications in the linear regression model, but now applied to this unobserved latent variable. So our point of departure, again, is a linear specification with y star sub i, a function of x sub i, beta, and the error term. And we have two cases. In the first case, we have sp spatial dependence in the latent variable. So that's the case where we have a non-zero covariance between the latent variables um, of neighbors. So it's very important to keep this in mind. This is not spatial correlation between the ones or between the zeros, as we had seen in the joint count statistic, but this is spatial correlation between the unobservable latent variables y star sub i. <clears throat> And then the other case is where the dependence is in the error term. So we have our linear specification for the latent variable, but we have spatial correlation in the error term. A lag model then would have the spatially lagged dependent variable included in the regression specification, just as in the case we've seen earlier, but now the spatially lagged dependent variable is the spatially lagged latent dependent variable. So it is the y star sub j. So the expression is exactly the same as the mixed uh, spatial auto regressive, regressive model that we've seen before, but the lag term pertains to the latent variable. So this is actually quite a complex concept because um, you have to think about it at the conceptual level and at the theoretical level. So we are modeling the dependence between propensities, propensities to vote for a candidate or propensities to buy a product or underlying preferences or underlying utilities. So this is very, very abstract and we are not modeling specifically the dependence between the ones and the zeros, we're only modeling those indirectly. They are the consequence of the underlying latent process. And it's very important to keep that separate. And it's very tempting in uh, interpretation and, and description to um, forget this distinction. So the correlation structure, very importantly, pertains to the latent variable and not to its realization as a zero or a one variable, a binary variable. And this can uh, lead to some potentially counterintuitive uh, findings or effects. For example, we can have, uh, although this is unusual, but it can happen, a latent variable that is spatially correlated, but the binary variable is not. This is an edge case. But what is more common is that the latent variable is not spatially correlated, but the binary outcome is because of the stress threshold effect. For example, we have this illustration here where we have, um, I have simulated a, a latent variable as a standard normal random variable, so it's uncorrelated by construction, and then applied the 0, 1 cutoff, and so roughly half, sometimes a little more than half, will be one, 
and the others will be zero. And you see a process that is actually by a joint count statistic um, spatially correlated. <clears throat> then here we see one I have generated a spatial spatially lagged latent variable with uh, following an autoregressive process with an autocorrelation parameter of 0.5 and uh, we see this impression of clustering that we've seen before when we discuss spatial autocorrelation statistics and then on the right is a 0-1 pattern with a very high significant joint count statistic. So that's something to keep in mind. So this for the spatial lag model, the dependence pertains to the latent variable. The error model then is uh, much more straightforward in the sense that it's just the same as before. Um, the error you sub i follows, say, a spatial autoregressive process or a spatial auto moving average process or something else, um, which is the same as in the uh, linear regression case, only now again the dependent variable is a latent variable, not a, a regular variable. And then the major consequence of this error process is that the error terms are no longer independent, no longer uncorrelated, so the conditions for the probabilities can no longer be expressed as um, simple uh, marginal distributions for the u sub i, but the marginal has to be derived explicitly from the multivariate joint distribution for the error terms. And that joint distribution, as we've seen earlier when we discussed spatial autoregressive processes, will be heteroscedastic, so it's a multivariate joint distribution with non-diagonal um, elements. So non-constant variances. So that's that's the main effect. Now to illustrate what this actually does to our uh, choice processes or uh, probabilities of reaching the threshold, what I've done here is very similar to what I did when I illustrated the effect in a linear case, but it's um, essentially taking a linear regression specification for the y sub star as the latent variable, but uh, since we're simulating, we can actually create the latent variable. So we simulate a process starting with no uh, spatial autocorrelation, and then gradually we increase the parameter of the spatial autoregressive process, and we see what happens with the number of ones and number of zeros. And it's actually very striking. So we start with row zero is the black curve, which roughly has about 66% um, of the Y star values larger than zero. That, that's a function of the parameters in the simulation um, that, that we set up. And so uh, as the spatial autoregressive parameter increases, we see two things. First of all, the curve shifts to the right. So we see the green, then the blue, then the red curve. They shift to the right, which of course affects the probability of crossing the threshold. And then also the curve drops or it gets fatter, which means the variance increases. So we see a major effect under positive spatial autocorrelation on the proportion uh, of the latent variables that cross the threshold and we also see a major increase in the variance and the the proportion larger than zero goes from basically two-thirds to almost one. However, unlike the um, linear regression case, the effect of negative spatial autocorrelation is very different. And in this simulation, I did the same thing, spatial autoregressive process, and we see primarily um, an effect on variance. So the curves are dropping, but they stay roughly centered the same. So there, there's much less effect on the uh, probability of crossing the threshold, 
but there is a an, an effect a pronounced effect on the variance the variance increases so in other words unlike the linear regression case where we could basically treat positive and negative spatial autocorrelation in the same way in the latent variable model uh, the sign matters a lot In the, we do the same thing for the error model, first with a positive spatial autoregressive coefficient, and we see something very similar as for the lag model, but not as pronounced. So there is again a shift to the right of the curves, and they drop, they get thicker, but not as much as in the lag model. And again, also similar to the lag model, the effect of a negative spatial autocorrelation coefficient is much less. So, uh, in a, a nutshell, the effect is similar to the lag, but not as strong. The main effect of the error spatial autocorrelation is on the variance, and um, the, um, the sign, again, matters. It's a much less of an effect on, for negative spatial autocorrelation than for should be positive, not position, positive spatial autocorrelation. So that is an important finding. Uh, so in a nutshell, we see similar, um, we have similar findings in, in the linear regression case, but there are two important differences. In the linear regression case, spatial autocorrelation in the error term did uh, not affect the, uh, affect the estimate, and the, in fact, the linear regression the estimated by OLS remains unbiased. In the spatial probit case, this is not the case. So for the spatial, uh, or the, I should say in general, the spatial latent variable model, both the lag and the error result in bias. We see the major shift of the curve uh, for positive spatial autocorrelation. And so then the second difference is that in the linear regression model, there isn't really much of a difference between the positive and the negative case, but it is very strong uh, here in the latent variable model. The effects for negative spatial autocorrelation are much uh, less serious. So next, we'll switch to the actual specification of the spatial uh, lag and spatial error probit and tobit models.